black people have been trained to think the way that the white supremacists want us to think. So that training is very limited. And basically, it comes down to what is it that black people want more than anything else? That's a very important question because everything, all problems are solved by first asking the correct questions that address whatever the problem is. So you can start with any number of questions, thousands of questions, but uh, the question, what do black people want, is a very important question. Collectively, the average black person, what does that black person really want, particularly in the Northwestern Hemisphere? What black people really want, because we've kind of been trained that way, uh, sometimes most of us don't even think about it, is that when we get a little leeway to do some thinking of our own, and our wants kick in because everybody wants something from one minute to the next. You want something. But overall, what does the average black person want most? Well, you want to be comfortable enough so that you can pay your bills, et cetera, and have a roof over your head, just the basics, because all organisms want that. But once you get a little bit of that, then you want social interaction. Now, what kind of social interaction do black people want? They want it with each other because that's what they're used to. Black people, when they get a little money in their pocket and get some type of wheels under them so they can roll around and a roof over their head and some food in the refrigerator, now that next thing that they want is to contact what? Other black people. Now, here's the important question. Contact other black people for what? Usually it's just to sit around and make small talk. So the white supremacists, directly and indirectly, have provided means by which black people can make small talk all day long. And the small talk among black people usually leads to what you might call uh, trivial conversation. Our conversations usually don't consist of anything that matters, that has any you know, real impact on doing anything constructive, truth be told. Now, the question was, what is the black people's mindset? That's our mindset. It's a very shallow mindset because it means that you're just working and accumulating money and accumulating bling bling and accumulating things, I mean, and things here and things there. Ultimately, so you can go around other black people and make small talk. Stop and think about it. What do we actually do when we get a little time to ourselves? We don't know what to do with ourselves. So what we do is say, well, i got to contact so-and-so. Why? Because I haven't talked to so-and-so uh, in a little while. And then i got to contact so-and-so. And i got to contact so-and-so. And you got to recontact so and so. All black people contacting other black people in order to what? Do what? Not to build a huge, better society, not to come up with greater ideas, but just to sit around, like back in slavery time, down by the riverside, making small talk. And when this is all that comes out of your effort of going through all the agony, and all of the problems that you that are heaped up on you and all like that. And your only ambition in life is to look up other black people in order to make trivial conversation, truth be told, that's what it is. Then that is very shallow for people who are trying to come out of what they call first chattel slavery and then so-called segregation and racism and all the rest of it and set that as a goal for your entire purpose on the planet. And it's got to stop and get a greater goal. So I've recommended what black people do is don't contact each other under any circumstance unless we have something constructive to say, and it had better be over-the-top constructive. And that'll be painful for black people because we're not used to it. 
we're just used to just running our mouths, I mean, blabbing, you know, on the phone or shouting down the road in the old days and all like that. And uh, being out in the field working hard and whatnot, I mean, it worked then because there was nothing that you could do. I mean, you were much more confined and whatnot, and it's just like prisoners in a small cell. We're in a bigger cell now. But we got to elevate our minds out of that little box of that childish, trivial, small talk, a lot of it among younger people, leading to disaster, which is why you have this yellow tape fluttering all over the neighborhood on weekends and sometimes during the week. And a lot of it just comes from small talk that brings about small animosities, that brings about what you call jonoing among young people who pick it up from old people making small talk, talking about nothing that's going to have any monumental consequence in the future or even now. And it's got to stop. Now, it'll be painful, like I said, because that's all we are used to. But it will change a whole people overnight if we become constructive people just in our conversation alone. That the word gets out. Black people are not going to talk to you about anything unless it's constructive. And as soon as the constructive conversation ends, they'll say, I'll see you. And they might not see you or talk to you for another three years until they think of something else constructive to say because they are not going to engage in small talk. They are no longer small-minded people. End of that story.